Well, good morning. Well, we welcome you this morning to Heart of Longmont. My name is Claire McNulty Drews. It's wonderful on this beautiful summer morning to have each and every one of you worshiping with us this morning. All who are weak come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the streams of life with the pain and sorrow. Be washed away. And I have these two little, two little, um, these are tigers. I couldn't find any lion puppets. Um, but um, he found himself in a situation where he was being punished, actually, for following God. He was put in a den of lions overnight by himself and left there. I can't imagine anything more scary, personally. Um, I you know I said I was afraid of snakes, but that sounds like really scary, really alone, really fearful. And yet, God brought him out of there. And so there's plenty of things. There's so many reasons we tell these stories over and over, whether it's the hundredth time you've heard it or whether it's maybe like the first or second time you've heard it. But one of the things that sticks out for me is that it's not that God is there even in the scariest times, but really that God is there especially in the scariest times. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king. I have done no wrong. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Each of these sections, if you go from the beginning to the end of the book of Daniel, it is meant to give us hope. So when you look at it in its entirety, we are meant to leave the end, get to the end of the book and say, that is a book of hope for those walking in tough times, for those who are exiled, for those in times of oppression. Daniel's stories are uplifting. They give us hope. And there is this one central theme throughout the entire book, and that is that God's power will always overcome the ruling powers of the day. Here in exile, they are being forced to forget their values, to forget their worth, to forget their identities, even to forget their names. So instead of allowing that, Daniel said, enough is enough, and he demanded to stay connected to who and whose he was. He demanded to stay connected to God. Don't lose sight of that. Find ways to remind yourself that you are good, that you are worthy of God's love. If others are telling you otherwise, be like Daniel. Say, enough is enough. And remember, I love when I find myself sort of turned upside down in life and topsy-turvy and not even sure who and what I am anymore. I love returning to the beginning of the story of creation where God said he create, where we, God creates humanity and says, it is good, you are good. I love going to the beginning of the story of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark at the very first of the Gospel. And it says in there, when Jesus comes out of the baptismal waters, God says, you are what? My beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Remember this. You are loved. God is with you. Daniel doesn't run and hide. Instead, he lives his faith and his life wide open for all. And again, what we see through Daniel is when we are facing hardship, when we are facing trial, when we are facing difficulty, continue. The challenge is to continue to pray, to stay connected to God, to not let all the craziness of this world get in between us and God. Because when I am grounded, when you are grounded in a relationship with God, we go back to the beginning, 
we remember who and whose we are. When all hope seems to be lost, we are called to pray, and in that we are ground in hope. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. What's easy is cynicism, negativity, complaining. That's easy, isn't it? But hope, hope. It's the gritty, nasty little carrier of such diseases as optimism, persistence, perseverance, and joy. Go, my friends, and be carriers of hope. Amen.